Wargamers, I have a problem. You see, I have a lot of terrain, but all of it is really has this fantasy aesthetic. And I want something that can be used both in fantasy and in sci-fi based games like Fallout, Wasteland Warfare, Kill Team, or Snarling Badger Studios Space Station Zero. While I like the idea of these little cargo containers and scatter terrain, they don't quite fit in those sci-fi settings. So let's make some of our own. These are essentially going to be the same thing, the cargo containers and stacks of boxes, but shrouded in a giant fabric tarp to make it look like it's a weapons cache that's just kind of being covered up. To start, we'll break off a piece of our XPS foam. Using the cargo containers and that kind of stuff I have from my fantasy terrain, I'll get myself some rough dimensions. This is just really to get the shape, general volume of the kind of terrain pieces I wanna build. Once that's been cut, We'll go through the arduous process of breaking down those squares into smaller and smaller sections. Next, I'll take two coffee stirs and use them kind of like as a railing to kind of ground all the stuff that we're gonna be building because the styrofoam so light. And then taking those squares we just made, we're going to glue them down together with Mod Podge and create the overall basic form that we're looking to build. Remember, the more mishappen the shapes are and the different angles you include, the more visually interesting this is going to look. I even went ahead and made a tiny little one as an objective marker just to show you that you can do quite a bit with this same idea. Now next we're gonna mix up some Mod Podge and some water in a two to one ratio. So just a little bit of water to a bit more Mod Podge. Take a paper towel, dunk that sucker in there, get it fully, fully soaked. And then we're gonna drape it over that little terrain set that we just made. Now, here's a pro tip. Starting from the top, you really wanna pinch all of the individual boxes that you made. You're trying to define those right angles, those hard corners. Start at the top and work your way down to the bottom. In fact, when I get to the bottom, you can see here I'm using a brush. There's no Mod Podge or anything on it. I'm just using the brush to push the paper towel into the nooks and crannies. Again, the more you do this, the more definition and shape you're gonna have in your final product. I will warn you though, you're gonna wanna get, let this sicker have like a day or two to dry. And when it's done, you have these two crusty looking things that are just quite gross. And so it's time to take a pair of scissors and trim away all the extra. Now, what's great about this step here actually is that this is still pretty malleable. So even if you cut a little bit too much or too little, you can still bend the paper towel and it'll keep that form so you can get a perfect shape for your objective or terrain piece. Now we're gonna do one more coat of Mod Podge, but this time we're gonna inject some brown paint into it. This is because one, now that we have the overall shape that we want, we wanna protect it and strengthen it. That's what this layer is gonna do. But also that brown paint is going to act as a base for all of our painting going forward. And there is no trick to this, just really lather this stuff on. We're not worried about micro details that we're gonna lose. In fact, if you have a pattern on your paper towel, this will cover that up and saturate it so that it looks more like just a general rough material than having a nice little clean pattern all over your cargo containers. Once that's had a chance to dry, you'll have two crusty brown looking dividers like we have here. And we're going to start dry brushing. Now I used Decomposed Flesh from AK Studios. Really, it's just kind of an equivalent to Shabti Bone from GW. And we're gonna do an exceptionally heavy dry brush with this because this is really the main color I want it to be. That kind of khaki, you know, a cloth tarp looking material. And so we're gonna do, like I said, a very heavy dry brush all over all of it. Same thing for the bigger piece here. Of course, this one has a lot more wide edges, so just be careful of that. You really can't go too hard with this, provided you just kind of leave some of the deepest recesses alone.
Next, there's gonna be another highlight dry brush, but this one is much lighter. This one I actually went with, uh, I just put a little bit of white inside of the decomposed flesh just to kind of lighten it a bit. And we're just focusing on the highest edges and the corners really. Next year, I went ahead and took some Skeleton Horde Contrast Paint by Games Workshop, and I, I noticed that a few of the wrinkles weren't really well defined. It wasn't that the dry brush was too hard, it's just that the shadows from the brown I chose weren't deep enough. So with Skeleton Horde, I went back through and just picked out a few of the little micro folds that you normally wouldn't see, but really add to the scale because they're so small, right? It just it really adds a lot to the picture. Go around, trace all the little uh, dividers, wrinkles, that kind of stuff with just the tiniest amount. And I'm talking like there's barely anything on my brush of Skeleton Horde because it is that same khaki skeleton bone color. Now you could stop here, but I wanted to add a little bit more. And so I got some old um, transfer sheets from my bin and I thought, hey, this would be a pretty cool little uh, weapons cache objective. So let's grab this fire team symbol here. We'll attach it to my little cargo bot here. Sliding it every which way, but the way I want it to go. And boom, once that's had a chance to dry, it'll be looking good. Also, I did the same thing over on the longer piece of terrain, but this one I went with the Dark Angel symbol because there's just something kind of like generally militant slash Brotherhood of Steel-ish about it. I like it quite a bit, it's a cool symbol. But with those dried and sealed, we can get on to the glamour shots. I just wanted to give a massive thank you to hanging out with me today and watching these. I hope that you can crank out a ton of these things. I think I did 12 in this big batch all at once. And it's the quickest, cheapest way to fill an entire table with terrain. Just have people fighting in the ancient storage rooms that the, you know, the Ark of the Covenant from Indiana Jones is hidden in. If you're interested in more stuff like this of how I do terrain for the various miniatures agnostic games that I'm going to be covering here on the channel more and more, please let me know in the comments down below. And if any of those games do interest you, I have a link tree in my description down below that'll have a whole bunch of savings for you no matter what miniatures game you are looking to play. It supports me, my wife, the channel, and I'm so thankful for each and every one of you who uses those links. Until next time, friends, happy wargaming.